What's up guys, Grim here. If you left a comment in the comment section of the last weekend video that I made, then you are entered into the giveaway of a 30 day patron pass. And the winner of that patron pass is, congratulations, we'll be sending it to you shortly on your YouTube account. So make sure to check into your inbox on YouTube. We have yet another person that has signed up to be a supporter of the channel with a Patreon donation. If you look in the description below this video, you will see a link to our Patreon account. And if you're somebody that really enjoys the content that I'm creating, all the guides, gameplay, all that, and would like to support the channel with a dollar donation, that is the place to do it. And of course, we're building a studio real soon, so uh, every donation really helps. Uh, if you're somebody that just wants to kick back and enjoy the channel, that is very cool as well because every view counts. And if you guys are enjoying the content that I'm putting out, then that is awesome for me. So keep on keeping on and we will make the videos and hopefully you guys will like them. All right, so in celebration of more people supporting the channel with the Patreon account, we will go ahead and give away a couple things. We're going to be giving away a 30 day patron pass as well as a power pack. And if you are unfamiliar with what a power pack is, it's a bunch of items. Uh, one is a lifter mount that is engulfed in magma and stuff. It's really cool looking. Uh, you get a 32 slot bag. You get a really cool cloak for your characters. You get a trove of transcendent vials, like two of each. So there's a lot of cool things that you're going to be getting with this power pack. If you would like to take part in these giveaways, and we'll have two winners, one for the 30 day patron pass and one for the power pack. Uh, all you have to do is leave a comment in the comment section below with your character name and server. If you happen to be one of the winners, we will send you a message on YouTube. So make sure to check out your YouTube inbox. The winners will be determined in the next weekend video. So good luck everyone. Rated T for team. What's up guys, Graham here. Today we're going to talk about my favorite subject, which is player versus player combat, also known as PVP. The thought of fighting other players for somebody that has not done it yet is usually a scary ordeal, and I'm looking to dispel some of those fears and show you exactly why it is one of the most exciting things that you can do. There is really no downside at all. Whenever you die, there's nothing like soul sickness that's going to affect your character. Basically, just jump into it, give it a try, and see if you like it. There are several different ways to take part in player versus player combat. The first that we're going to talk about is Warfronts. Warfronts are instance matches where you get put onto a team and you take part in small scale combat in order to accomplish objectives and win the match for your team. There are many different types of Warfronts, so let's go over the variations of them. The first Warfront is Flag Capture, and this is basically where you're going to run around the map and try to capture the flags to put them into the allegiance of your particular team. The longer your team has control of a particular flag, the more points it will earn. Some flags do award more points than others, so keep that in mind. The two ways to win these maps is to accumulate enough points to reach the point goal, or else have more points than the opposing team whenever the Warfront timer has been reached. The next type of Warfront we're going to talk about is the Assault type, and these are basically where you are trying to destroy one of the objectives that is controlled by the enemy team. The first team to destroy the objectives of the opposing team will be declared the winner, or else the one that has destroyed the most amount of objectives before the time limit has been reached. The third type of Warfront we're going to talk about is Martyrdom, and this is basically where you pick up an objective, and the longer that you're holding it, the more points that you will score for your team. The big trick is, the longer the person holds the objective, the more damage that they will take over time every single tick. So eventually, it will accumulate so much that it will one-shot the carrier and give the enemy team the opportunity to take control. Once a team scores enough points to reach the point goal, or else the timer runs out and the team with the most amount of points will be declared the winner. The last type of Warfront we're going to talk about is Escalation. The aim of this game is to capture source stones and return them to your base. There are two variations of this game, one being that in order to win the match you have to turn in a certain amount of source stones, and the other is to turn in source stones until you reach a point total. The team that reaches that goal first or else has the most amount of points or source stones whenever the timer runs out will be declared the winner. 
Now that we've talked about the various war fronts, now it's time to talk about the rewards that you can get from participating in them. Just for participating in the war front, you'll get favor every time a player is killed or else if the match ends. And this favor is used in order to upgrade your gear or buy consumables that can be applied to your gear or your character. Another reward you can get if you're part of the winning team is a Marauder Cache and once open it will either have platinum in it or a piece of gear and this gear can be upgraded multiple times in order to become some of the best gear in the game. And yet another reward if you look at the top of your Warfront menu whenever you're first queuing up for your match you will see a random Warfront charge at the top. These are accumulated once every day up to a maximum of 7 and if you had chosen a random war front while you still had a charge and you're part of the winning team you will get all the marks listed below. If you run out of war front charges there are multiple ways in order to accumulate more. One being if you're a patron to the game you will have an ability to grant yourself 3 additional bonus charges every week. Another way is if you have credits on your character, you can open up the Rift Store and buy additional Warfront charges from there. Last but not least, there are multiple weekly quests that you can obtain for your character and it will give you lots of rewards for accomplishing these quests in PvP. The quests range from killing a certain amount of players in Warfronts to winning a specific amount of matches. Now we get to talk about the granddaddy of all PvP and that is Conquest. This is an instanced environment where you are put onto a team to compete against other players to achieve the objectives and win the match. Instead of the traditional one team against another, this is three teams all competing against each other. The scale of the combat is massive where you are going to be fighting against hundreds of other players at times. In Conquest you are mainly going to be using area of effect spells and abilities to damage large groups of players on the enemy teams or else to heal several of your allies at once. Once a certain amount of players have been killed or else a specific team has captured the objectives enough to pass a threshold in percentages or points, a countdown timer will be triggered and at the end of the timer a winner will be determined. If you are fortunate enough to be on the winning team you can go to the center of the map and there will be a chest that you can collect your rewards from. The winner's loot can be marks that are used to buy or upgrade your gear or in rare occasions it can be an item that is highly sought after and needed in order to upgrade the best gear in the game. Additional rewards that you can get for participating in Conquest is the weekly quests and these range from killing a certain amount of players in Conquest to winning the Conquest altogether. Next we're going to talk about open world PvP combat. This is a bit of a broader PvP environment because it can happen anywhere. First we'll talk about dueling. In order to duel somebody all you have to do is target them and then type forward slash duel and you'll initiate a challenge that they can accept or else they can decline. If they accept it will be a one on one combat to where you can see which player is better at that given moment. Rest assured there is no penalty for losing a duel so feel free to duel anybody you like just for fun. The other main method of open world PvP is done on PvP servers. These servers are specifically tailored towards the player versus player community to where they will be able to fight anywhere in the open world for the most part and it is an adrenaline rush wondering when you are going to be attacked or else when you should attack a player. Those that enjoy a challenge will find PvP servers to be very exciting in that you will never know what is going to happen or when a fight will break out. Finally I'd like to talk about Dimension PvP. There have been many improvements to Dimensions to make it to where you can enjoy player vs player combat against your friends there or else you can even take it a step further and hold a PvP tournament. This gives you the opportunity to be as creative as you would like and create the PvP environment that you would like to fight in or else have your tournament take place in. Set up an exciting PvP environment in your Dimension and invite everybody to take part in it. Not only will it be fun for the competitors, it will be exciting for those watching it and it will help out the community by contributing towards everybody getting together and having a good time. Now we're going to talk about the gear that you can get from participating in player vs player combat. Whenever you win a Warfront match you obtain a Marauder Cache and once you open it you have a chance of getting a piece of gear. Well, there are upgrade paths for it and also currencies that you're going to need and we're going to go over all of that. 
first off, as we previously mentioned, whenever you win a Warfront match, you get a Marauder Cash, and once you open this box, you have a 50% chance of obtaining a piece of gear. The gear that comes out of these boxes is not going to be very powerful initially, but you can upgrade them to make them much more powerful and stand a much better chance against your opponents. As you participate in PvP, you'll accumulate a lot of favor, and this can be used to buy favor-infused accelerators, and these are one of the components that are needed in order to upgrade the gear that you get from the Marauder Cache. Other marks that are needed in order to upgrade your gear can be obtained from using your random Warfront charges, or else turning in your weekly PvP quests. Once you have these marks, all you have to do is open up the Rift Store and buy the accelerator that is needed in order to upgrade your piece of gear. As you are upgrading your gear, there are many things that you can apply to your items to augment them and make them even better. The most common augment is runes. These can be used and applied to your gear in order to add extra stats to them. Runes can be obtained from faction vendors if you have enough notoriety with that specific faction, or they can even be obtained from the auction house as many runes can be crafted. Another augment commonly used is dream orbs. These crafted items can be used and applied to your gear in order to add extra stats much like the runes do, except for the big difference is the results of dream orbs is random. When using them, you don't know if the stat that you are obtaining is going to be the one that you're wanting or else if you're going to use several dream orbs in order to get the result that you want. A third way of boosting your gear is through consumables. Most of these are crafted but some of them can be bought with favor or other currencies. Consumables come in a wide variety anything from adding attack or spell power to your weapons to adding armor to your chest piece to even applying a consumable to your boots to make you run faster. These consumables usually have a set duration, so you'll need to reapply them once the effect wears off. The last form of augmentation that we're going to talk about is through abilities. Most ability augments are obtained through planar attunement. Once you hit level 50, you'll start accumulating planar attunement experience, and once you get enough of it, you'll get points to where you can put it into the various trees, and some of these abilities that you'll pick up will be able to augment your armor and gear. These abilities can have many different effects, such as adding attack or spell power to your weapons, or even reducing crowd control effects onto your character. These abilities will have a set duration, so once the effect wears off, you'll need to reapply the ability onto your gear. And finally, we're going to talk about prestige and achievements. The more you PvP, the more prestige you will earn, and as you accrue this, you will eventually gain ranks in it. As you level up through the prestige ranks, you will unlock many different titles that you can display on your character and wear them like a badge of honor. If eventually you can reach the highest prestige rank and unlock the top PvP title, everybody will know that you're a seasoned veteran of battle and you have conquered thousands of foes. And the final talking point is achievements, and these are much like prestige in that they are basically a way to measure your PvP experience in the world of Talaria. There are hundreds of PvP achievements, and once you have completed one, it will display on your screen your accomplishment. Achievements range from killing so many flag carriers in one warfront, or else winning the match altogether in a very short amount of time. With each achievement that you get, you will get so many points to add to your overall achievement system score, and that will let you know how vast your PvP experience has been so far. An extremely difficult goal is to get all of the PvP achievements and be one of the few people that has done so. I hope you guys enjoyed this PvP overview and I really hope it inspires many of you to give it a try if you haven't already because it's very exciting. The adrenaline rush is crazy going up against players that you do not know what they're going to do. The rewards are great and there's no downside. As usual, my name is Grim and I'll see you next time.